to show you some really cool stuff and maybe talk to you a little bit about the success I've had and maybe it'll help you in finding some winning products or at least some some products that you can grow or scale in your business so with that being said let's kind of jump into it and let's start talking about products all right so that's me um, my name is Brett again father husband six-figure e-com funnel marketer and we'll talk about funnels later when we get into this um, I have a lot of fortune 500 experience so I work for Walmart I work for Cabela's Sears and Kmart all retail um, I was offered a senior UX position at Best Buy corporate and I came here to Eau Claire and took a digital strategist position where I led a team of marketers that did about eight figures annually in product launches <coughs> excuse me not bragging uh, literally this is just to show you that I've been in marketing for a long time so when I first jumped into e-commerce um, the funny thing is is that absolutely none of that mattered because <laughs> none of the stuff that I ever did at any job had anything to do with the model of e-commerce that works currently today and um, these product research and the product selection things that I'm going to show you um, we're all self-taught, okay, or from research that I learned from from others, and there's a lot of great stuff on YouTube. Uh, but this is kind of the method that I use to find products, and I just wanted to show you a little picture of me and my family. Um, we love it here. We we love the fact that I get to work from home every day. The flexibility is amazing. Um, it's just such a great time to be an entrepreneur, and it's an excellent time to get into e-commerce because it is growing like crazy, crazy. Brick and mortar's dying. E-commerce is where it's at, in my personal opinion. So these research results that I'm going to show you, um, they've resulted in some pretty cool things. So I have two different associated brands. Um, they're both sustainable, and I'm in them for the long term. Um, they're both e-commerce businesses. The one did about 250000 in sales last year. And the good thing about that is, unlike typical drop shipping, I have actually scaled to the point where I am not only private labeling, but I'm importing. And currently I'm actually manufacturing overseas. So I've taken the dropship model all the way to the most advanced piece of it to where I'm actually producing my own products for my market. So I'm hoping that this year we'll actually do between a half a million and a million and a half in sales. And not only that, but we're probably going in store. So it's a really exciting time. And I was able to accomplish this in less than two years. So um, you guys can do it too. I'm positive. I found a model that I could replicate. So I have a, a replicable model. So I'm going to keep building my businesses. So I'm still going to do drop shipping. I'm still going to do e-commerce. But the one thing that I really want to do this year especially is I wanted to focus on diversifying my business. So I've got these e-commerce brands. Everything's going good there. But I really have a passion for teaching and showing others marketing. I've done consulting and mentoring in the past. Um, I've gotten some really great results for a lot of my friends and seeing people's lives change just by showing them um, exactly how this stuff works. It's such a rush. So, I mean, I really wanted to diversify my business. And now um, I started Kickslam Marketing to kind of do um, the entrepreneur thing. Let's teach people how to do this product stuff. Let's teach people how to do Facebook ads. Let's teach people how to create funnels and sell physical products. It's my passion. It's what I want to do. Um, so it's really led to diversifying my business. And it all started with just product research. Um, my family and freedom. There, I don't fight traffic in the mornings. I work from home. I cook my son breakfast every morning. In fact, I just took him to daycare about 45 minutes ago. The flexibility to, to just run out when I have to, it's amazing with e-commerce, and it's given me that ability to do so, um, and I'm a lot happier. My wife, she, I was so miserable, guys, when I worked for somebody else. I was so miserable. I hated my corporate life, but you know, I was afraid. I was afraid to jump out on my own and do this because um, that fear really holds you back. You think of a steady paycheck, but I was miserable. Um, I exercise now. I eat right. Um, my outlook on life is so much better. I don't panic. I don't stress. Um, everything has been great since I jumped into e-commerce. And um, I just want to let you guys know that this is a, a real business model, a real working business model. Tons of people have success with it, and you can too. But it really does start with product research. And my goal is I want to inspire you to think differently about physical product selection and research. And I want to inspire you to think that way because I think differently about it and I found a lot of success thinking differently about it. Okay. I think people are too product focused. I also think they're too Facebook ad focused, but that's another discussion entirely. 
but we shouldn't just focus on hot product softwares or Chrome extensions or usual research methods and marketplaces. Guys, that's what everybody does. And when everybody does something, that leads itself to competition, okay? Think about your larger marketing to find winners more often and easier. This is what you'll learn. Hot or winning products are literally everywhere. When you know which marketing model will work best to sell the product. So let me give you an example. A lot of people, probably two years ago, three years ago, were selling survival goods, okay? So one of the first big free plus shipping offers, uh, survival, tactical, like little, little things that worked. Now those products worked unbelievable in a free plus shipping offer. Now, if you take that same, let's say it's a can opener, or it's like a, one of those things that was like a metal thing, it was like a business card size, that a can opener, a knife, it was like a 12-in-1 tool, right? Now, imagine if you took that item and you tried to sell it for $19.95 with a Facebook ad, do you think it would sell? Odds are it wouldn't, okay? So is that a hot product? Yeah, it was a hot product as a free plus shipping offer in a model that worked for it. But is it a, is it a good product in another one? No. So a lot of people talk about, hey, I don't, I can't find hot, I can't find winning products. It's like, I think it's, it's more dependent on the model and how you sell that product than the product itself. I think a lot of people just want to focus on hot selling products. And that's really the problem. Some of my products that I sell, they aren't hot sellers. They have hardly any sales, but my marketing, my model, my angle, I end up turning one of those products into a winning product in the model that I use. So that's really what I want to kind of attack today more than anything. So this is it, guys. This is my whole method. And it's really simple, okay? So we're going to talk about the marketing models. And those marketing models are going to be drop shipping, uh, shop or, or Shopify, a general or niche store, private label import, and sales funnels, okay? I'm going to I'll mention those. I didn't mention print-on-demand because I personally haven't had a lot of success with print-on-demand. So these are the ones I'm comfortable teaching, and these are the ones that work for me. So that's what I'm going to show you guys. Um, we're going to talk about the typical angles. So we have free plus shipping, um, single product plus upsell, single product plus related, and then we have the Mac Daddy granddaddy of all, which is the the single product, the bumps, the upsells, the cross sells, and then even advancing that into something like a membership club. So um, depending on how you wanna sell these products, there's an angle to sell each and every one of them. Uh, the goals, um, one of the most important things about your goals is that you're gonna find less winning products or hot products um, when you have different goals. So <clears throat> let's say you wanna advance past the drop shipping model and you wanna go into private label importing. Um, you're gonna to have to know that when you start doing private labeling or importing that you have quantities that you'll have to buy overseas and that you'll have to figure out your logistics and you'll have to figure out your, your holidays if you're shipping from China. So, I mean, it depends on what your goals are for your business because that's what we're building, guys, a business. And if you're just in it to find hot products and scale out Facebook ads and then call it a day, you're going to be doing this over and over and over without real long-term results that come with something like a brand. So I want to make sure that we get our goals kind of clear when we're doing our product research. And then you keep those in the back of your mind when you're looking for products. I'm going to just briefly mention impactful offers. So videos, images, and storytelling, how we line up our offers with our audience and how we drive traffic to whatever model we're, we're using and whatever angle we're using. And then the last one is choosing fit products. So we're going to do the deep dive research and we're going to execute product tests with products that are likely to succeed. So marketing model, how do you want to build and how do you want to sell? Basic to advanced. Everybody starts out with number one, guys. We usually start with drop shipping. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Shopify or general niche stores that can also be one product stores, which are getting um, very popular right now. And then we're going to talk about private label importing, and then we're going to talk about sales funnels. So these are the kind of, these are the marketing models, and I want you to think about which one you like, because your research is going to be dependent on where you are in your business. This is kind of a basic to advanced, um, and how I like to start out every product. I always start out at the dropshipping level. Okay, so let's talk about the dropshipping model. I've got some pros and cons here and, and kind of what to look for. And then we're going to kind of jump in and it's going to be a little back and forth. Um, I want to record this in one one kind of swoop here, so I'm not going to do any editing. 
I just figured I'll give you the guys the information just down and dirty and you can handle it how you want to. Um, but we're basically just going to go over all of these things quick. Uh, the pros with drop shipping, easy entry, right? Um, no inventory, you can use a general store and you can evolve that into a niche store if you find a good product or two. It's a lot of great research tools. I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, I will go over some though. Uh, there's a lot of products to choose from. We've got millions with uh, overseas. We've got millions here in the US. We've got tons of products that we can sell customers. And it's also flexible, right? So you can start out drop shipping and then you can kind of turn that model into something else. Like you can grow it into private label or your own brand, or um, you can turn it into a, a sales funnel, whatever you want to do. Um, the cons, uh, there's a lot of scaling competition. So if you're just going in to find products to sell with a Facebook ad, um, know that if you find a winner, you're going to have a lot of other people competing with you because this model is probably the easiest entry, right? Um, supplier communication becomes important. You start selling a lot of units. You have to make sure that your supply is there so you don't get uh, a lot of refunds and you don't get a lot of uh, chargebacks and things like that. Um, lower margins, typically 15 to 25%. Low Shopify conversions. I found that Shopify stores are not the best way to convert customers. So I use a funnel model personally. All of my products are thrown into funnels. They convert way, way better. Um, you'll have a lot of heavy Facebook ad work. So You'll be starting a lot of new ad sets. Uh, you'll be scaling a lot of your ads. So if you're not ready to do Facebook heavy ad work, this model is not good for you. Um, long shipping times is another con of the drop shipping model. As you know, a lot of people do e-packet, um, but you know even that is becoming longer. And now with Chinese New Year, um, people are seeing 45 days before their products are even shipped. So you know there's a lot of long shipping times, which means. Um, you're going to have to worry about more back-end tasks. Your customer service is going to have to be on point so you don't get chargebacks. Um, what I look for in this model, and this is kind of where I start, is I do look for good, hot selling products, products that are hot right now. Typically, they're like a $1 to $15 product, and typically, I look for complementary products. So uh, when I say complementary, I mean other products from the same or a different manufacturer that fit. So if you're selling a... a kitchen gadget, let's say it's a salad cutter, I'm going to look for a cutting board to go with it. So I always keep that in the back of my mind when I'm searching, what else can I pair up with this product? Hot in two months or less with good ratios, that is directly related to looking and doing this Facebook research, what I'm going to show you here pretty quickly, where I want to make sure that this ad or a series of ads that are promoting this product are less than two months old. And when I say good ratios, I mean a lot of likes and shares and comments, but it doesn't look weird. Sometimes you'll see something like 10 million views and like three likes and three shares. I'm not sure if it's just Facebook all messed up or if somebody's hacking something or making it weird, but those numbers don't line up. So you want to make sure your ratios are good. Um, high supplier ratings. So a lot of rating systems, especially with like AliExpress, I always look for products that are at least 4.6 or higher. Um, I want to make sure that the products are delivered to customers, that they're receiving them. Um, and that is a good quality. So, you know, I don't have to deal with chargebacks or something later on. I like in this market, drop shipping, trending, problem solving products. Those are my favorites. So if it solves a problem or it's really trendy or kind of a cool thing or a cool gadget, that's what I look for. I also want to make sure that it's not available in retail necessarily. And I mean, brick and mortar retail. Lots of items that you find will be sold on Amazon. Guys, don't worry about it. One of my best selling products is all over Amazon and tons of people are selling it. Doesn't matter, I still sell it on Facebook with Facebook ads. Um, then of course, we're always looking for ePacket. And then when we're doing some of our research in AliExpress, um, we can look at the US and the worldwide sales. So we wanna make sure that if we're selecting a product for a US audience that maybe um, we just check, we make sure that it's being sold in the US. That's, that's basically it. All right, so let's talk about research methods. This is my favorite one. It's called the purchase pixel fire method. We're gonna fire a purchase pixel on a dropship product. And the reason why we do that is we'll start getting more of these kinds of products in our newsfeed. I do a lot of research in the Facebook newsfeed. Um, it's kind of how I started doing this research and it continues to produce winning dropship products. So what I like to do, it's kind of a nice little hack. So. I'm gonna, it's gonna get a little clunky. Um, I wanna kinda film this in one swoop here. I don't wanna do a lot of editing to this video and just give you, the, give you the information. So let's just, let me go ahead here and exit out of this. Okay, 
and then you're going to want to use this tracking code right here okay and i'll give you this code here or i'll get it to ace so you guys can have it this is definitely the the code that you'll want to use um and we're going to go to our facebook news feed here and when we scroll through when we see a dropship product like this you need to come down here and you're going to like it and then you're going to hit the shop now so we're going to go through the whole funnel of this okay <clears throat> The other thing that you'll want to download for this to work, it's called the Facebook Pixel Helper. It's a Chrome extension, 100% free, and it's going to give you the fires on the page, okay? So we'll want to add it to the cart. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll want to go to the checkout. So we're going through the whole funnel, right? And what we'll notice when we come up here is initiate checkout now we've got a content ID and a value so we'll want to copy this content ID okay and we'll want to put that value right here Then we'll want to do the same thing for the value. $24.99, copy it, come back over here. Okay, and then we'll want to copy the whole thing. Now we're still on this page here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click hit the inspect element and we're going to hit console and right down here we're going to paste it and then we're going to hit enter now it's going to say undefined but did you notice this right up here it fired the purchase pixel and don't worry about the warnings but now we are recognized as a purchaser. So anybody that's running purchase ads to us, if we go back to our news feed, I'm just gonna hit F5 again. And when I start scrolling through, look at, now I'm starting to get more ads. Advanced teeth whitening system. I'm now recognized as a purchaser without even buying the product. So. I'm going to start getting ads that are campaign objective for purchase. That's pretty cool, right? So this is a great research method. This is an amazing way to start seeing products that you otherwise wouldn't see. So I'd recommend using that as kind of your, your first starting point, okay? So let me go back to our different methods here. And we're going to talk about the Facebook ad search method, okay? This one's pretty simple. It's been around for a long time. If we go back to Facebook, what I like to do are a couple of different things. One, if you right click here and you show the URL, you can copy that. You can come over here, hit paste. this to load it's a very popular item I've seen this a lot of times um, we can see the view count here you can see there's some likes comments shares <clears throat> decent ratios always check the ratios on these products I like to come in the comments and see if the comments are recent typically and this one isn't this isn't the case here but typically a lot of people use bit.ly links, right? So what I like to do, is I like to actually search the videos with bit.ly 50 off. And then I always like to come down to 2019 so I keep it recent. And now I'm looking for videos like here's one right at the top. January 10th, you know, so it's a month, it's recent, it's got 2 million views, that's a super hot product. 
January 5th, 843,000 views. That's a hot one too. See, this bit.ly 50 off search in the videos is gonna give you a bunch of products that you can check out, and then you can try to find those products on AliExpress. So that's a really good method for finding products. So those two methods alone are really geared great for this kind of dropship method because these are products that are recent within a couple of months um, that you can try and you can usually find them on AliExpress. So that's a great method to find some products that are trending right now. Okay, so that's the Facebook ad search. Um, the other one is AliExpress Dropshipping Center. So I like to use AliExpress for research. I don't necessarily source many products from here anymore because I've advanced my business model. But what you'll want to do is you'll come over here and you'll go to My AliExpress once you're signed into your account. It's going to re-sign me back in because it's, I think it's an incognito window. Well, what you'll want to set up is this tab. It's called Dropshipping Center. And the cool thing about this tab is that it's going to give you hot dropship items. It's going to give you a trusted supplier's rank and product analysis. These are all really great tools. And the cool thing is, is you can just choose a category like women's clothing, men's clothing, you know the categories on AliExpress. But let's just go to one here. Let's go to beauty and health and let's go to healthcare. It's going to show you like really hot products with a lot of orders here. And one of the things that I like to do, I've seen this sold a lot of places, is I'll click on the item and I'll grab this link here, right? I'll copy it. Let me go back here. They've got this product analysis here and you'll want to paste that link like here and then you'll hit the search. And now what this is going to tell you is what they're averaging for daily sales. Like, look at this, 127, 275, 274, 275, 173, 270. So there, you know, this looks like it's trending as a very good product. So this is just a random one that I selected. Um, we're looking, it's a brace support belt. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's hundreds of sales on this product. So it's obviously a selling product. Now, when I talk about hot or winning products, we don't know how this seller is selling it, right? So maybe they're doing a, you know, a really great ad where you buy one, you get one free, and that's why they're selling so many. So if you tested this with, let's say, an image ad and you couldn't get to sell, you might say it's not a hot product, but it is, guys. Look, it's, it's 200 plus sales a day are coming in from this product. So it is a hot product. It probably has more to do with your model than the actual fact that it's a hot that a hot or a trending product. So what I like to do is just confirm that the sucker is selling and then I will force it into the model that I know that works for me. So um, those are kind of the good ways to start out on your dropshipping research. Um, there is another way and I don't necessarily use it that much but a lot of people recommend it. And let me see if I can get this to pop up here. Again, I'm sorry for the clunkiness. I'm just trying to keep all these windows open and uh, I don't want to do a lot of editing today. So let's see, there it is. It's Ecom Hunt. Ecom Hunt is a software and I will tell you this guys, a lot of people get crazy about these softwares. You've probably heard of Ecom Hunt if you haven't. Um, they'll source products, they'll try to find hot or they'll curate hot products for you or products that are trending. Um, it's a good way when you're just getting into dropship to get a dropship to get a feel for the different kinds of products that are available. Um, I would recommend signing up for the free version of this. Give it a look, start seeing what products are showing up. But honestly, if you really want to drop ship, you're going to have to find your own products. Those are where you're going to find the most winners is by doing some deep dive research, okay? But check out Ecom Hunt. Um, I have not tried it. I've just looked at it, and some of the products don't really fit the model that I like, so I don't use it. And that's why it's so important to find the model that you want to use because that's really that's the key to all of this is figuring out your model. So all in all, that's drop shipping as a model. And the next one we're going to talk about is... Shopify general and niche model.
Now, pros, cons, what to look for, research methods. Uh, pros, you can build a brand around a Shopify store with a professional look. You can go from general to niche diversity. So once you find a hot product, you can obviously translate into a niche area. Tons of app integrations on the back end with Shopify so you can make it easier to run a store. Simple back end selling. You can send abandoned cart emails. Um, you can send coupon codes, special offers to your customers. Much less manual work, right? It's easy to build a store. Um, and it's flexible for diversifying as well. Some of the cons, as I've said before, Shopify stores for me usually present lower conversion rates. So a hot product that has a conversion rate of 2% versus a product that has a 10% conversion rate, one of them's a hot selling product and one of them's not. So one of the deviations I've made in my business is that I've actually moved away from Shopify when I'm scaling a product. And in fact, we'll turn that into a sales funnel. Um, another con, apps get expensive. Uh, there's very high risks um, involved with the Sh Shopify and general niche model. Um, I'll give you a, an example. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad one. So when I started importing um, and I was using a Shopify store, I actually lost um, about 30 days window because a plane started on fire that had my product on it. So um, if you're doing drop shipping and you're doing a Shopify store, just know that um, there are things that can happen when you're drop shipping products from overseas. Uh, low Shopify conversions, again, um, heavy Facebook ad work. Um, you're going to be selling on Facebook. You're going to have some heavy lifting to do with drop ship products, especially with a store. And then you've got longer shipping times, of course. Um, once again, look for product costs one to fifteen dollars. Complementary products; these are all the same as the general drop shipping model. But since we're talking about research methods in this presentation, I want to talk about how I like to do some research for um, these. And the one new one that you'll see on here is the myip.ms, and that's kind of a list of all the Shopify stores. And I like to use this when I'm thinking about building a brand or a Shopify store. I like to see what other people are doing. So I'm going to exit out of this quick again. MyIP.ms, this is the IP of every Shopify store. This is Shopify's IP. So if we're going to do a who is lookup on this, 23.227.38.32, it's going to start showing us websites on this IP. So if you're doing research and Shopify store research and you're trying to create like a niche store or a branded store, um, you can actually see I'm a human being. You can actually see the top selling Shopify stores. Isn't that great? So a lot of you have probably seen this method before. I like to use this method when I'm doing general niche research, when I start thinking, you know, what can I build a brand around? What's a product I can build a brand around? And as you'll see here, ColourPop, it's a really good one. Um, another thing you can do is you can follow these all the way to Facebook, like their pages, um, and start following their info and ads and start seeing uh, what kind of advertisements these companies are running. So I know that ColourPop was started out as a dropship store. Um, you can go down here. It's going to give you a full list. You can you can hit view all records. You know, there's a really cool way here. And I'll see if I can remember how to do this. Now, there's a way that you can search by, gosh, I want to say it's like, there it is. Say you're in a market. Say you already have a defined niche, right? Oh, no, it went away. Well, let's just go through and check one of these out, okay? So let's go to ColourPop. See if we can actually click on the link here from the page or anything like fashion and you, these are all. Let's go to colorpop.com. It's a big beauty supply store. They've turned it into a really nice brand. Um, these guys started out drop shipping. I'm assuming now they have their own private label products all over the place. I haven't looked at these guys in a while. I'd like to come down here and click on their Facebook page. And 
and then click on the see more then come down here to info and ads when you do that when you follow these pages to their to their Facebook pages and you click on the info and ads button the cool thing is is you'll start seeing the ads that they're actually running right now so these are always good you can like these pages and they'll start showing up in your news feed or you can do what I did and do the pixel fire method so you get more of these kind of advertisements showing up in your news feed and that's really the important thing when you're doing product research is let's start getting these products to show up in our news feed because that's really how you do some deep digging and you find some winners especially um, when you're using this this model or the Shopify model so look at other Shopify stores you can use the same tricks that I used for drop shipping, but this is the one when I like to think about brands. I can do product research on their pages. I can look at their, their trending products. I can look at the design of their websites when I'm thinking about kind of niche stores and things like that. So um, just want to show you those methods. Uh, the rest of them, I showed you the bit.ly.50 off verification. That's a great one. Um, again, you can go to the AliExpress drop shipping center. Um, you can use Ecom Hunt Commerce Inspe Inspector. It's a Chrome extension, so when you're doing Shopify research, besides just the Facebook Pixel Helper, download Commerce Inspector, and that will show you, I think it's a $20 bill a month if you want to sign up for the full version, but it will show you how many orders they're getting. Um, and then, of course, there's kind of a product in Shopify uh, search that we have here at the bottom, and let me show you that quick. So if we go to, um, let's go to, let's go to Google. I'll just open a new tab here. If you're thinking about a Shopify store and you want to run dropship products, um, let's think of a, what's a really hot selling product. I'll just do this one. It's so old. If you do this search with a little plus sign here and you do a plus Shopify and you type in a really popular product that you've seen, you're going to start getting results that have Shopify stores and that are selling that product. And here's Gear Genie. This is a general store. You come down to the bottom here. Typically, not always, they're going to have a Facebook page. I might just hit the share button to go there. Let me just see this quick. your gallery but what I like to do is I, I type in a hot product I put plus Shopify and then I'll try to follow the Facebook page and it's just product research here's the Facebook link right here and then once I'm here I'd say about 50% of the time when you click the see more over here and then you see the info and ads they're gonna show you the info and ads that they're running not all the time See, yep, now we can see all the ads that they're running. This is a great way to do product research. You can stumble upon a great product that didn't show up in your newsfeed just by typing in a popular product and then um, plus Shopify. And that'll give you um, some different products that you haven't seen before. So these are all very like deep digging research methods. They're more manual. It's not like using something like Ecom Hunt. Um, but I think you'll, you'll find that it's a lot easier to find really great products to test out in a model when you do a little bit more digging. So let's advance here and let's go on to private label and import model. Okay, so the pros, cons, what to look for in research methods. And when you're going through these, I really want you guys to think about the models because these models all have pros and cons and they all have different ways of doing research around them. Okay, so brands with higher perceived value. Okay. That's what private labeling gives you. You have a higher perceived value when you can put your logo or your label on something. You can use funnels to sell higher card values. I've said it before, I like to focus on sales funnels. I think they're more effective at selling products. You can control your shipping times when you private label. Typically, you'll be ordering from overseas and you'll be getting them private labeled here, or I'm sorry, you'll be getting them private labeled there, but you'll have control over when they're gonna get shipped to you after you pay 
Um, your profit margins are a lot larger with private labeling, so 30 to 60%. It's a more advanced model naturally because it's not as easy to enter. Um, easier outsource and fulfillment. Um, once you have some tasks in place, um, it's pretty easy to actually outsource some of the tasks that are that come with a private label model. And then there's less competition. And that's one of the reasons why I really like and I try to tell people try to build your business into a private label model because the margins are so much better and it's a lot more work and there's less people doing it. So if you find a winning dropship product or you do a Shopify store and you find a winning product that's working for you, um, try to get that sucker private label because that's when you can really start making money. Some of the cons, again, it's more advanced and you need to find a winning product first. Um, you have to run into issues like cash flow, bulk orders, uh, minimum order quantities. So factories will want you to produce a thousand of them before they'll private label for you. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely a more advanced model, but in my opinion, much more profitable. Um, limited upsells, memberships and bumps. You, it's hard with a Shopify store and a private label model to get a membership site built or have some bumps or extra value built into the cart. Um, packing and shipping to start. Uh, when I first started this business, I was packing and shipping my own products and I still will do that when I'm testing a product. So know that when you're thinking through your goals, if, if you don't want to pack and ship products, private labeling might be difficult for you to start. OK, um, you need more organization. There's Chinese New Year's going on right now, longer shipping times. So you have to be more organized. Um, let's see if I can get this to. Try that again. Sorry about that, guys. I know it's clunky. I can't get this little bar to move away. <laughs> Let's go ahead and exit it one more time. Niche defining and less flexible. Okay, we'll just keep it in this mode right now. Hopefully, you can read the screen. Um, once you find a product that's a winner. And you start private labeling it, um, it really defines your niche for you. And that can be a good or a bad thing. So with a general drop shipping store, a general store, um, you have the flexibility to test more products. Um, but when you kind of do this, you're going to have to go all in on a product and really do a one product store, or you're going to have to like, define your niche. If you're selling a beauty product, you're going to be a beauty supply seller. So you're going to have to look for more beauty supply products to kind of keep that business going great. Um, what I like to look for six to fifty dollar product cost niche or problem solving or trendy still low moq when you're ordering from overseas try to get 300 or less that just helps you with cash flow um get goods that'll ship light um i've noticed there's a lot of import and duty fees that are added on to weight but also on price so um, make sure that your goods are small and they ship easily electronics sometimes have harder times getting through customs um but yeah goods that'll ship light are always great products to look for when you're searching out items Low cost, high perceived value, um, always not available in retail. So the research methods for this are you really have to do your, your critical thinking. So you can always start out by doing some of those Facebook methods and start thinking about products. But what I like to do is I actually like to go on Amazon and search products. And it's pretty simple, guys. Just look at the categories, look at the top selling products and start thinking about different niches. And, and there's a lot of great things about Amazon, okay? There's a lot of private label sellers over there. So when you're doing your product research, don't be looking so much at like Facebook ads for niche products, but look where a lot of private sellers live and they live on Amazon. So do your searches there. The other thing I'll mention is that Alibaba and DHgate, um, you have to typically, it's not like a one-off like AliExpress. So like AliExpress, you can order one of something, but Alibaba, um, or even DH gate for that matter. These are these are products that you have to order larger quantities of and typically it's harder entry, but you're going to find some interesting products in Alibaba that you can't find in AliExpress because you have to literally order them in bulk. So when you when you actually get into private label importing model and you realize that model works for you, um, focus your research more on Amazon and focus your research more on Alibaba because that's what you're you'll be you're you're basically opening up products that other people that are doing just a strict dropship model with like AliExpress, they don't have available to them. So you can test any product there. Um, I always go to DHgate and see if it's there. For a test, for example, because 
Sometimes a lot of the products on DHgate are on Alibaba, and if you find one you like, and you still want to try out a minimum order quantity, you can order it and test it, and you can send it to your customers with DHgate to start, and then you can transition to the actual factory for better margins. Um, eBay, another place, a lot of people are selling dropship products there, a lot of people are selling private label products there. Check out eBay searches, go into different niches, different categories, um, and try to find try to find some products that fit for you. Um, another one, and this is a good one, is Google Trends. So when you start looking at Amazon and you start thinking of products, and I actually found one the other day and I'm probably going to test it out, and by all means you feel, feel free to test it out too, but um, I noticed that Christmas time, uh, friends were getting weighted blankets for Christmas, and it seemed like weighted blankets are really, really hot right now. So let's just check this out once. I'm going to go here and create a new tab. And I'm going to show you why this is kind of when you're doing your research, you know, so I had all these friends that had weighted blankets and it's like, man, those are really popular. I wonder if that'd be a good product to sell. I looked on AliExpress, guess what? It's hard to find a weighted blanket in a price point that makes sense, okay? So I came over to Amazon, I looked up weighted blanket. There's different ways to organize out these categories. Um, but what I'm seeing is, we're looking at an $80 price point all the way 200, 100. This one's got 2,441, <clears throat> excuse me, reviews. 79.90 for a weighted blanket, um, 99. So you can see these are pretty expensive and that's just a starting cost. I wanna say if you actually click on this, that's like the smallest 15 pound blanket I wanna say is, is that price. Okay, so it's like a middle range. We go up to like the 25 pound blanket. It's like 120 bucks. Okay. This is what uh, kind of a, a model can do for you in the private label kind of market. So we come over here, just look up Google Trends. And this is a really good thing to check out, even for dropship products, is enter in a search term and see if it's trending. I've been weighted blanket. Okay, see we're on the downtrend here, but it looks like in October, people were doing a lot of searches for weighted blankets. It looks like it was probably a hot Christmas item. I mean, my friend even got one for Christmas, um, but weighted blankets are a good problem solver. It looks like it's on the downswing here, um, but it looks, and we'll check it out over can sort by like past five years, for example. Take it back a little further, maybe helps you out. You can see overall, look at the trend here. In the last five years, nothing's going on here. And then look, when we start getting into uh, 2018, look at that jump in comparison to the previous four or five years. So this is a product, in my opinion, that's gonna be selling, and it's gonna be selling for a while. So. What I would do is if you are interested in the private label model, you might have me as a competitor, which is totally fine, but I would look at a product like this and say, look, it's a good product. I'm ready to get into private label importing. Let's go over to Alibaba now and see what kind of prices we can get for a weighted blanket like this. I know this is kind of a, a side swing, but I use Google Trends, I use Alibaba, I use Amazon when I'm thinking bigger than me. You know, when I'm thinking about a hot product that I can try to sell to my customers, um, I really try to look for hidden gems. This is really the key is once you know your model, um, you can start doing some, you can start finding products that are, look at this. Oh gosh. So here's a minimum, right? 50 pieces, $9.80 to $39.90. Okay, there's gonna be shipping fees. You're gonna have to import this or maybe you can talk with this supplier who sells this blanket and they've got a 15, a 20 pound, this looks like a very similar weighted blanket. As we could see, there wasn't a single blanket. Look at this, 15 to $26.46 each, two sets minimum order. Okay, so this would be a great one product or private label product that you could create. Looking at a blanket, probably after shipping, 
um, add another 10 bucks per unit, let's say it's going to be 40 bucks per blanket that comes to the US, and you can sell it on Amazon for $120, that's big time margins, guys. So here's a product that, um, that I'll probably test. Honestly, I'll probably import one, see what the quality is like, get one from the manufacturer. This is something that I could turn into an entire one product store, or I could use it in a sales funnel to sell more than one item. And this is really more of an advanced model, but um, this is a winning product. And I, I bet if you spin it into one and you want to invest the money, um, you're going to find a winner on your hands here. So, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of Google Trends that or there's a lot of searches you can do on Google Trends to find these kinds of products. Um, correlate them with Amazon sellers. Take a look at Alibaba. See if they have a product that you can get, maybe even in low order quantity. And I'll go over to DH Gate just to show this too. Look, say, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to have to order fifty of these and be out right away. I don't even want to know if if it tests right or what. You know, like that's a lot of to get fifty sets of this. That would be a lot of investment on your part. But sometimes you can come over here. Okay, they're a little bit higher. And this happens a lot. Sometimes you come over here and you realize they're just middlemen and they're selling the product for a really high cost. But here we've got one in the $50 to $56 range. Minimum order one piece. So if you wanted to, you could drop ship and you could do it with something like this. And it's a little bit easier entry, right? So you could do one off purchases um, and you could set it up on your store. So if you didn't want to risk buying a lot of product up front and you wouldn't mind paying an extra 20 or 30 bucks maybe, um, then you can always come to DHgate and drop ship it in that model too. Um, so there are workarounds for some of these methods. Um, obviously, you're going to have bigger margins, more risk and stuff when you're uh, doing your private label and you're importing, but there's opportunities there. And I just want to show you guys, um, check out Google Trends for these private label opportunities. It's the best research method, Google Trends, Amazon, Alibaba, and then that's really a great way to start seeing some of these you know, awesome products that nobody else is really selling because it's harder to enter into them. Let's see if we can get this to pop up now. So we covered private labeling. Let's go into, let me see if this just goes away. Um, the sales funnel model. This is by far my favorite model to choose. Um, you can use storytelling selling. So yeah, that's a, like, a nice rhyme. Uh, but basically your product ads can tell a story and you can do that with a sales funnel. Whereas you're typically driven to a cart page with a sales funnel model, um, I use ClickFunnels and ClickFunnels, you can actually create an experience that really resonates with your customer. Massive conversion rates, 10 to 15% conversion rates, guys. I've had all the way up to 25% conversion rates when I do this. Huge cart values, 2x to 5x cart values, higher profit, 30 to 60%. Once again, I'm usually importing or private labeling a product in this method, but you can do it with a dropship product and you'll still see massive conversion rates. Um, bumps, cross sells, upsells, and memberships. You can build a more advanced business by building it out into, you can have an order bump, which is when they're at the checkout, you can say, hey, would you like to add um, expedited or fast shipping for $6.95? Customers love to take that. All of a sudden, if you're selling a product and you're selling it in multiples on a funnel, um, if you were to do that same product on a Shopify store, you might only sell one of the product and you don't have the ability to give an order bump like $6.95 shipping. And then you could maybe give them an upsell or you could say, hey, would you like to try a membership? All of those things add up to bigger cart values and it adds up to more spending on Facebook. So a product that wouldn't be hot with Shopify, once you turn it and burn it into a funnel, can actually be very profitable on the front end. The other thing I like about it is I don't need a store to do this model. I basically sign up for ClickFunnels and I test a product with a logo, make a really nice experience page, and boom, I can sell a product to a customer without a website. It's really neat. The cons are it. Um, one product limited, need a larger brand store in time. So when I use this model, I actually turned um, a hot selling product into an, a whole brand. So I built another website, another store. And I really started focusing on other things like Google Shopping ads um, and really scaling up my business into other areas. And now, like I said, I'm going to be actually manufacturing and I'm actually going to be going in store with that product. So it's very exciting. Um, ClickFunnels is expensive. Um, the basic version is $97 a month but it is invaluable, but the sales funnel model, if this is one you're interested in, um, unbelievable, unbelievable model. 
Long setup time, it takes me six hours sometimes for a funnel to create it. So it's a one product page basically, or a one page shopping experience that has upsells and bumps and cross sells. Um, so it does take a little while. And if you have a product that you test in a funnel and it doesn't do well, guess what? You're gonna have to build another funnel page. So you do have to put in a little work in this method. You can get a little tricky with your cart and your PayPal and your payment integrations. Uh, Shopify is really easy to set up PayPal and Stripe. It's just like you click a button, add in your card information, you're done. So it is a little bit more difficult. Um, in time, it's an advanced model. So it takes, it, it can start out very simply, but it usually advances pretty quickly. Um, what I like to look for are products in the $60 to $50 product cost range. And I also think, can I scale this into a membership model? So when I'm driving traffic to an offer with a funnel, I absolutely love to try to tie it into a membership. So when I'm doing my product research, I might be looking at, let's say, a fishing lure, okay? And I think, okay, so the fishing lure itself as a product, um, it's not the, the most alluring thing in the world. I mean, fishermen like them, but there's so many fishing lures. But what if I could package it into a gift box club and I could say, if you sign up for 20 bucks a month, I'll give you you know, 10 fishing lures in a box delivered to your address every, every month on the month, like a gift box club. You can do that with a sales funnel model. And what that allows you to do is build a larger business and a larger model around it. Um, much harder to do with Shopify store. Still look for niche and problem solving or trendy products, low MOQ. Like I said, I'll be importing when I use this model. Typically, you can use it with drop shipping and it'll still have some of those bigger cart values and a higher profit margin. But I personally like to, to import and private label these days. Um, so goods that are ship light, low cost, high perceived value, not available in retail. Um, once again, similar searches, if not exactly the same to the last model. Um, but the big difference here is, is I use a lot less software guys and more gut in my research. I really try to find products. I try to focus on finding products that'll fit any of these models at any time. And I know it from experience that this is kind of where you go with that product and how you make it a real winner over time is that eventually you'll want to build it out into a brand. You'll want to put it in a, a funnel for larger card values and you'll want to go where other people don't. If it's hard to import and it's hard to private label, that means less people are doing it. So when I'm doing it, I know that the competition is not as fierce, which means I'm going to have more success with my product. So that's really how we advance the model over time. So think about it, guys. Which model are you? Think about all of those models. And if you're in, let's say, the drop shipping or the beginning model, that's great. That's where I was when I started. That's the model that I still test to this day. I still test drop ship products because you can pick up a winner that will get you twenty or thirty thousand dollars in sales just strictly by drop shipping. But now when I do my product research, because I like the private label import and the sales funnel model so much, I'm always finding, I'm looking for products that'll fit that model because I know it works. So the product research is a lot easier. I find a lot more products because once you have a model, you understand what types of products will sell in that model, what kind of niches and audiences you can find. So when it comes down to product research, it's much less about the softwares and the things that you'll find. And it's more about the model that you wanna use. Now we're gonna look at some selling angles just to kind of go over some of the simple stuff. And I know this is probably going longer um, than it should, but I just wanna be really, really like present for you guys. I wanna give you tons of value. So please stick with me if you're, if you're starting to tune out or, or, or whatever, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really just trying to keep this as, as uh, specific and to the point as I can. So it, the angle is like, how do you like to sell products, right? So free plus shipping, uh, single product plus upsells, single product and related upsells. And then the Mac Daddy is a single product plus upsells, related products, bumps, membership clubs. So really, where do you want to advance your products? If you want to just do a, a Shopify store, um, you're going to have like a single product and an upsell or a single product and a related upsells. Um, if you want to do a free plus shipping model, um, we're going to talk about that. And then if you want to go into something like um, actually importing private label and you want to have bumps and membership clubs and all that stuff. We're going to talk about how that lines up too. So very quick, uh, free shipping. It's a low dollar offer works best at products that are one to $5. You still need a high perceived value. Um, if you're looking for these products, AliExpress, DHK, those are the best options to start, you know, start looking for products that you can get, uh, for a free plus shipping offer. Um, right there, use the drop ship research center. Um, I personally think these work the best in funnels because once you have a free shipping offer in a funnel, you can add on or stack on a lot of value later. Um, 
I don't like to sell low dollar products. I don't like to sell free plus shipping products. And it's because I like to find um, a little bit higher value products that maybe not everybody can can afford. And that way I can kind of isolate a market by myself. So um, once the cash flow starts coming in, I like to go for bigger products. But if you like the free plus shipping angle, um, definitely consider funneling it up. Look for common inexpensive items, products that will sell in multiples. Um, always think about membership and club opportunities. If you can tie in a monthly fee, you can have back end cash um, for the life of your business. And that's really been the secret to success for me is that once I built in a back end membership, um, now every month I don't have to worry about cash flow as much because I've got constant memberships coming in. I've got 20 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month from hundreds of people. So um, I'll end up just my business on its own. I'm not just selling a product. I've advanced it to a point where I'm selling a monthly membership and there's a lot more work involved in it. But at the end of the day, um, it keeps the lights on. It keeps a roof over my head and I love it. Look for light, small products for easy importing. Um, don't want to get heavy weights. Um, definitely want to have low values when they're being imported so we can not have to deal with big duties or import fees. Always look for products that aren't found in a store. It's huge. With a free plus shipping product, um, it's got to be a product that nobody's seen before or it's got to be just not available in store and it's just got to hit that market. So um, once again, I recommend selling for funnels. Funnel selling is the recommended angle. Um, single product plus, plus upsells. This works best at five to $20 products. Um, AliExpress, Dropshipping Center. Um, always start with a general store, then go niche or funnel if the market is good. Um, you can use Shopify apps to do this. So it's the same thing as like a related product upsell. If you're selling a, a kitchen gadget, again, I'll say a salad cutter and we'll go into like a cutting board. You'll want to have similar upsell products that you can sell. It works well with a store. Um, look for trendy or buzzy problem solving items, problems that have comp complementary sellers and items. So if you're looking at kitchen gadgets, look for like kitchen gadgets from the same sellers. So if you want to sell um, a kitchen gadget, plus when they add to the cart, they want to get another item, try to make sure they're, they're still widely available and there's good products in the same market on AliExpress. You have the ability to go general store to niche. Um, so once you start doing this model or this angle with this model, the dropship model, um, know that you can spin up a niche store and make it work. Look for e-packet items with good reviews, recommended. Go from a general Shopify store to start, then a niche store or funnel in time. Another angle, related. Um, same thing, related products, same kind of stuff. Trendy, buzzy, problem-solving items, big niches, health, wellness, outdoors, uh, kitchen, you know, home goods kind of products. Um, products that have complementary items, general store to niche, e-packet focused, and again, it's the same. So if you want to do um, just product sales where you want to think about just ease of drop shipping to your customers or ease of selling similar or same kind of products, I definitely recommend doing it with a, a niche store and, you know, relate your product research to this kind of this angle, you know, look for products that are in that five to $20 range. <clears throat> That's where it works best. <clears throat> and then finally, the angle of upsells, bumps and membership clubs. Um, these work really good at $6 to $50 products in my experience. So they're more expensive, the model you'll probably be using is private label or importing, but you can start out with drop shipping. Use ClickFunnels to sell it. Build a larger business model. Use Amazon, Alibaba, Google searches. Really use your gut instinct when you're trying to build out a business this way. Um, you'll have to have a more pinpoint niche. Um, once this model starts working, you'll start trying to find models in that same niche. Um, you really need to know your audience. You're going to be spending a lot more money. Um, products are never in store. Make sure that this product has not made it to in store. Um, that's going to give you the best chance of success when you're doing your research. Um, you can take one product to a multi-million dollar business in this model, guys, in this, this sales funnel, click funnels model. Um, that's why I highly recommend this. This is where you advance to in your marketing. Always test dropship products. Always use the Facebook methods to do so. Um, but if you really want to go this way, um, this really separates you from the pack because not a lot of people can cut it here. This is where the big boys play. And I mean that in a, in a nice way. The big boys have already advanced their models to drop shipping and they've gone from there to private labeling, to importing, to creating their own brand. You have to get complex in your business if you want to stay in this for the long term. Quick money, cash grab money and drop shipping is great. 
Um, it'll open up your eyes to markets and products, and it'll start. You'll start learning things that you never knew were possible. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you advance this model, as um, over time it gets more complicated, but it also gives you a better chance for success in the long term. So always think when you're going into product research, is this something that over time I can build into this? Okay, let's talk just shortly with goals. How do you want to run your business? What's your tolerance for complexity? Be honest with yourself. Okay. Do you wanna do you wanna pack items in your basement? If not, stick with the drop shipping model. You can find great, great products to ship that can, can be sourced. Um, when you start getting more advanced with your models, you have to start thinking about what you're comfortable with. Um, how are you going to fulfill orders on the back end? What softwares are you going to use? Um, be honest with yourself. Um, if you don't, if you don't have a stomach for importing items, then don't try to sell the blanket because you're going to lose your butt when you're drop shipping it, right? You know, you have to know your goals so you can deal with less customer um, customer concerns, less chargebacks. You really have to be honest with yourself. And spoiler alert, I use every one of these methods, people. Every single one of them outlined in this presentation. And I find hot products all the time because I find products that fit the model of drop shipping but might not necessarily fit the model of private label or importing in time. I find products that are more suitable for putting in a sales funnel. I see products all the time. They're literally, it's endless. So when somebody says to you, um, you have to look for hot products or you have to look for you know trending products, the reality is any one of these products that you start looking at, if you wrap your head around the model that you wanna use and you think about your angle, so many more products become available to you because you have a model that you're shooting for and, and there's only a certain amount of products that really fit that model well when you tie it with a niche. So it's much easier and you'll find winning products much more often when you stay open to all of these angles and you start thinking about how these products will fit in the kind of marketing that you want to do. And that's really what I wanted to provide in this presentation more than just research methods was wrap your head around how you want to sell these products to who you want to sell these products, what kind of model you're using and the angle. I think you'll be surprised that when you start thinking through the marketing over actually the hard hitting product research that more of these products line up in different models than you think. Okay, here's just an example of the sales funnel model. This was a $29.95 product Okay, that's what I sold it for. I didn't have a website. I didn't do any SEO, no Amazon, no Shopify. I ended up getting a $54.92 um, cart average order value. Okay, so people, people were like adding this product two times as much on a funnel versus a Shopify store. My product cost was only $8.60, but I sold two of them to every customer. It totaled a fulfillment cost of $17.20. Guys, my profit just on the front end from doing the sales funnel model with private label and import, my profit was $37.72 per customer. That means I could spend literally $37 on a Facebook ad and still break even. Now that's the beautiful part about funnels and when you start thinking about models and what kind of products fit those models. I could spend $20 to get a purchase on Facebook and still make $17.72. I could spend $25 on a purchase and still make money, up to $37, and I could still break even with a product. That's the power of using your mind when you're using these research methods, is that you can find products like this, and you can find the products that nobody else does because you advance your model over time. Okay, impactful offers, I'm gonna make these last two really quick. Lining up the correct product offer for your funnel, Videos, images, and storytelling, what do, what do people like to do? Guys, evolve into videos. If you are doing image ads right now for dropship products, you're dead, guys. You have got to move into videos, okay? Use them nearly exclusively. Order a product, ship it to someone on Fiverr, record them using that product that you wanna test, you can use image ads for retargeting or carousel ads with multiple products, but you want to use video ads, okay? Use storytelling, private label offers, free plus shipping. You can use image ads with, with a story like, hey, company sells a million fishing lures in two weeks. Check this out. And you can have an image ad and it'll work, but I highly recommend 
that you evolve into videos. It works better for your Facebook advertising. It sets you above the rest. Don't steal videos from other people. Make your own videos. It's going to help you find winning products when you can select a winner and you have your own custom video to go along with it. You're going to just destroy and you're going to crush people. You've got to do it. It's a night and day difference. Video ads are where it's at, guys. It's what Facebook wants to see is video content. You're going to have to evolve into videos. And lastly, guys, fit. Start searching out products that fit the type of marketing you're trying to accomplish. I hope that you learn that you can dig deeper on these, on these research methods to find products that fit a model, that fit a niche, and fit the kind of marketing that you want to do. That's really what I wanted to show you guys today is you will advance over time in this, and you will find success in just a dropship model. Plenty of people do it. But if you want to evolve your business into something that's long term, I highly recommend evolving from drop shipping and then evolving into private labeling and importing or even sourcing in the US. If you don't want to if you don't want to import from overseas, look for great products. Once you find a working model, look for US based suppliers. That's fine. Cut, make it a little easier on the back end. Get, get US based suppliers to drop ship for you. That's a great model. It works. But what I want you to just see is that once you fit products to the kind of marketing that you want to do, the product supply is endless. There are products everywhere that'll work for you. And I just want you to think deeper about it. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for listening to me. It's got a little longer. I hope, I hope, I hope you use some of these research methods to find better products. I hope you think about your goals and your larger, your larger business and it'll lead you to more success in areas where maybe others might have a hard time. You can maybe get out ahead. Um, my website's here, it's kickslam.com. Um, you can always send me an email if you need to at support at kickslam.com. I'm gonna get with Ace and I'll give you that code snippet for finding that purchase pixel. And of course, um, on Facebook, it's at kickslam marketing. And one thing guys is I have just started a YouTube channel. I have like nobody that likes me. It's <laughs> It's actually embarrassing. If you guys wouldn't mind, if you could just go over and like my YouTube link, um, that would be amazing. Um, I'll also give that to Ace too in case you guys need it. Um, send me an email anytime. Guys, I'm here to help. I am not asking for any money. There is no sales here. Um, Ace and I really just want to give you guys some great value. And I'm so honored to show you some of the methods that I use to grow a business, uh, especially in the e-commerce world, grow businesses. Um, I'm so thankful that you guys are taking this leap and you're trying to make e-commerce work because guys, it's an awesome model. It's nothing like I've ever seen. I've had more fun than ever. It's given me everything that I've wanted out of life. And I just want you guys to know that if you ever need anything, send me an email. I'm happy to help. Best of luck out there. And thanks so much again. All right, guys, have a great day.